What's up, guys? Welcome to Visualization. This is Nestor Adrian Sen, and today we're gonna learn about how to create relationships in Power BI Desktop. Hey, before we get started, if you are new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button because you don't wanna miss anything. All right, guys, let's get started. Hey, today we're gonna learn six different points. The first one, why is it relevant to create relationships in Power BI? The second one, create a relationship with AutoDetect. The third one, create a relationship manually. So we're gonna put more emphasis on this one, okay? The fourth one, how to edit a relationship. So the next one, how to configure additional options like cardinality, cross filter direction, and make a relationship active. Okay, so we're gonna learn about that as well here in this tutorial. And finally, if you are like me, so you're learning by doing, right? So we have a couple of examples to put everything in practice, okay? So why is it relevant to create relationships in Power BI? So I have right here two main points. It helps to accurately calculate results and display the correct information in our reports. Very important. The second point, we can work with the data in both tables as if they were a single table. Remember guys, we can create relationships between two tables, okay? So if we create a relationship between these two tables, there is no need to combine tables because we already created a relationship, okay? Yeah, we will learn more about this part as well. So please stay tuned. Let's go to our next slide. So now how to create a relationship with AutoDetect. So here, basically we don't have to do anything because the program does the job for us. As it says right here, if you query two or more tables at the same time, when the data is loaded, Power BI Desktop attempts to find and create relationships for you. But there is something really important here and I wanted to show you guys. So let's go to Power BI real quick. Okay, so by default, the AutoDetect option should be selected. So how do we know that? Let's double check that. So let's go to file and right here, options and settings, and then we hit options right here. So it's loading. And then let's go to data load. And right here, we see relationships, right? Please let's make sure that the first and third boxes are selected here. So that's by default. We don't have to do anything, but if for some reason someone else changed these options or these features, so we might want to double check that this is selected. Okay. All right. So this is good now. And then let's hit cancel. Let's go back to our presentation. If for some reason we don't see a created relationship, so what we can do is we can follow these steps right here home, manage relationships, and then we can hit auto detect right here. And then the program does the job for us as well, okay? So let's keep that in mind. So let's go to the next slide right now. How to create a relationship manually. We will put more emphasis on this one because we can customize our relationships here, right? So in order to create a relationship manually, we can follow these steps right here. Home, manage relationships, and then new. As you guys can see on the right side of your screen, so this is a screenshot where we can start creating our own relationship. Okay, it's right here, new. And then on the left side, by default, Power BI Desktop automatically configures the options cardinality, the cross filter direction, and make this relationship active for your new relationship. Okay, let's keep that in mind as well. Okay, let's go to the next slide. How to edit a relationship. So the steps are very similar, home, manage relationships, and then edit. When do we use this option? For example, if we wanna change the key column, let's say that we have two tables and those two tables have more than one key column. So, and then we wanna change the key column between these two tables. So we can go to the edit option right here. So now let's learn about configure additional options. Every time we create a relationship, so we need to understand cardinality, cross filter direction, and make this relationship active. So what happens is 
when we create a relationship, Power BI Desktop does the job for us. But a good practice is to double check this type of information, okay? So right here for cardinality. So we have three different types, one to many, one to one, and many to many. So of course, one to many is the most common type of cardinality. One to one is not very common. Many to many, this is not very common. And we will learn more about this option here as well, okay? The charts speak for themselves, right? For the one to many, of course, we have right here unique values on the left, and then we have duplicated values on the right. And that's why it's called one to many. For the one to one, we have unique values in both tables. For many to many, we have duplicated values in both tables. Now for cross filter direction. So we have two different types, single and both. Single is the most desirable behavior. It's very important, guys. The filtered context is always propagated in one direction of the relationship, okay? Basically, from one to many. That's the direction that we want to have. And then for both, the filtered context is always propagated in both directions of the relationship. As I mentioned before, single is the most desirable behavior. And finally, make this relationship active. So this is critical when there is more than one relationship between two tables. Yes, we can have more than one relationship between two tables, but only one should be active. That's why it's critical when there is more than one relationship between two tables. We wanna make sure that we are activating the right relationship. So now let's go to the next slide. I know you guys are very excited about this part and let's do it. The first example, create a one-to-many relationship. And we have right here two tables, claims you and channel. All right, let's do it. So what we're gonna do is we wanna get data, get data. And this is an Excel file, connect. And right here, we're gonna select this data right here. So don't worry, I'm gonna share with you guys this file as well, okay? Open. So right here, we're gonna select the first three tables, okay? And then we're gonna load them. It's loading. So what we can do is we're gonna edit these names right here real quick. This should be channel and this should be claims M and then right here claims U. So now our first relationship is between claims U and channel. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at model. Remember that the auto detect option was selected. And let's see if the program has created relationships automatically. Let's double check that. Bingo. See, if you guys can see right here, we have three different tables and we have relationships between these tables, okay? But just for this example, we're gonna delete them. Right-click, delete. Right-click, delete. Okay, because we will be focusing on how to create relationships manually. Okay, so before we create a relationship, let's create a table with this information. So we're gonna go to claims you. Okay, so let's drag customer into this area. And then for channel, let's drag delivery time, delivery time, and then we want to have also claim cost, okay? Let's do a claim cost. Boom. And then let's let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Uh, let's go to values here. And then let's increase the text size right here. Let's put it 14 if we want. And then let's keep editing this part for column headers let's also select 14 okay that way we can visualize this better okay so here's the deal if you guys can see something is wrong here right because we have delivery time 52 52 for every single customer and that's not correct and then for claim cost, it seems like it's working fine. 
That's why we need to create relationships. So now let's create a relationship, okay? Let's go to manage relationships. And right here, let's hit new. And of course, we're gonna select the tables, claims you. And then right here, we're gonna select channel. And then right away, we can see that the key column is customer between these two tables, right? Customer here, customer here. And then for cardinality, and we have right here one too many, so we are good. For cross filter direction, single, that's perfect. And then this relationship is active. So this works perfect. And then we hit okay, and let's see what happens. So we have a new relationship. And then we close this window. Let's go to model real quick and see what's happening here. So apparently this relationship is there now. So a good practice that you want to have is to put on the left the table with unique values because that's very helpful, okay? So you don't have to do that. That's a good practice. So that's what we have right now. We have claims with unique values on the left, and then we have channel on the right. So that's perfect. So now let's go back to report, and let's see what happened to the previous table. Bingo, guys. Remember that we only, so previously we saw just one value for every customer. Remember that? So here's the deal. After we created the relationship between these two tables, these values automatically changed. And now this report makes sense, right? So that's why it's very useful to have relationships between tables. So now let's go back to our presentation. So the next point is create a many-to-many -many relationship. And right here, there is something really important. So please here remember, in order to create relationships between two tables, at least one of the tables should have unique values. I'm talking about a key column, right? So that column should have unique values, at least one of the tables. But what happens when both of the tables have duplicated values? So that's quite challenging. And guess what? We can work around that in two different ways. The first one is by removing duplicates. So that's a quite straightforward fix, right? But we might not want to do that because if we delete duplicated information, we might lose valuable information for the report. So we don't want to do that. The second way is by adding an intermediary table made of the list of distinct key values to the model. And we're going to do that. We're going to use these two tables, channel and claims M. First, let's create a relationship and let's see what's happening, okay? Manage relationships, new, and right here, channel, and then right here, claims M. Automatically, we can see that the customer is the key column, customer, customer, guess what? Here's the error that I'm talking about. So in other words, we cannot create a relationship between these two tables. Now let's cancel this action and fix this situation right now. Okay, remember that we wanna create a relationship between channel and claims M, right? As I mentioned before, I need to create an intermediary table made of the list of distinct key values to the model. So let's do that. Let's go to home, edit queries, and then right here, pen queries as new, All right? So two tables, and then of course we know this channel is one table, and then claims M is the other table. And then we hit OK. So we're going to keep this table, right? And then what we're going to do is basically select that column, remove other columns, and then right here, right click, remove duplicates. OK? All right. So that's what we have. And then we can call this table customer. After we've done that, let's close and apply. All right. So now let's go to model and let's see what's happening. Bingo. So right here, so we have a new table. So we have the customer table. But remember, we don't care about this relationship. Let's delete that relationship. Because the program is creating that relationship for us, right? With the auto detect option. So let's delete that. And now, so this is the intermediary table that we were talking about. So now 
let's create a relationship between customer and channel. Of course, customer is the key column. Let's drag and release here. Boom, one too many, perfect. Let's do the same thing for the other two tables, customer and claims M. Let's drag customer into claims M. Boom, now we created a new relationship between customer and claims M. So now if we wanna create a report and we wanna use customer, so we don't wanna use customer from claims M and we don't wanna use customer from channel. So we wanna use customer from customer. So let's keep that in mind. So we can also do something really cool here. So we wouldn't get confused, okay? So let's select customer here and right click and let's hide in report view. So by doing that, we can hide this option so we cannot select that by mistake. Let's hide customer here as well. Right click, hide in report view. So this is what I'm talking about. Let's go to report real quick. So remember, if we go to channel, we don't see customer there. It's hidden, right? And if we go to claims M, we don't see customer there. It's hidden. So that's how it works. So in that way, when we create a report, we don't get confused, right? So we need to use customer from this table, from the table called customer. All right, so now let's create a new table. So how about if we duplicate this table? Control C and then Control V, it's right here. And then right here, let's unselect this real quick. Let's unselect this right here. Okay, so now we have an empty table. So what we wanna have is claim date. Claim date, remember the claim date from claims M is right here. Boom, and now we have right here hierarchies, right? If we don't wanna have that, what we can do is go to here and then claim date, boom, that's better. And now let's select customer. But remember, we need to select customer from the customer table. Select that, customer right there, right? And then let's select delivery time. And remember that delivery time is right here. Boom, it's working fine now so far. Let's move this a little bit to the left so we have more space. And then right here, how about claim cost? Claim cost should be right here. Boom. So that's how it works, guys. That's why it's very important to have relationships in Power BI Desktop. So if you want to edit this format, the claims date format, so what you can do is basically go to data and let's select right here claims M. And right here, what you can do is you can go to modeling right here. And then let's say that you want to have a different format. Uh, you can do this right here if you want. Boom, there you have it. And then if you want to go back to report, it's right there. That looks better. So that's how it works, guys. And then you can keep editing if you want, right? But you can get the main idea here. So relationships are very important to filter data. We don't need to join tables to have information from two different tables. We just need to create our relationship and that's it. That's how it works. Let's go back to our presentation. That's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and also don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss anything. Again, this is Nestor Adriansen from Bisexualization and see you guys in my next tutorial.